So moving on to the Spa 24 Hours 2019, the second big endurance race of the year and the biggest GT3 event of the year as well. Uh, and yeah, this was a big event. I mean, the event itself started on the Tuesday uh, where we, the team, all stayed at this beautiful hotel just uh, down the road in Stavolo um, where we had team dinners and things like that together. So it was nice to sort of chill out before, it was the calm before the storm effectively and, and see all the guys again before uh, the real work started on Wednesday. However, Wednesday was another sort of drawn out long day really. All to do with press, preparation, signing on, scrutineering, uh, getting everything done and sorted before track action actually started on Thursday. Uh, it also provided one of the highlights of the Spa 24 Hours event, which was the parade going down to the uh, to Spa town itself, uh, where all 72 entries of the 2019 event uh, made their way down into town uh, to meet the fans. The fans can see the cars up close and yeah, get the chance to see GT3 cars driving on the road from the circuit to the town, which was a really, really cool thing to see. So we are here at the Spa Parade in the middle of Spa Town. 72 GT3 cars have just made their way down from the Spa Circuit in convoy on the public roads that have been closed. Police escort all the, all the jobbies. The sun has come out, it is absolutely boiling. It's about 35, 36 degrees at the moment and it's awesome to see so many fans out here uh, coming to support the race, see the cars, meet the drivers and also get loads of signed goodies as well. So um, yeah, make sure if you are near the square, come down and see the number 36 and number 34. Welcome to the car. So we've had a very long hot day here at Spa. We'll qualify and come out next and as you can see we are second. And we've prepped. I'm prepped. Don is still in his shorts and t-shirt as well. Psyched and pumped and ready for qualifying. Hot temperatures aren't helping the M6 today. We can't stay to stay long. So yeah. To do the best we can and uh, be cool over the weekend and potentially wet as well. See how the fight ends up. Remember, you've got night practice. That's going to be cool. Make sure you tune into the YouTube live stream as well. Blank GT World on YouTube. Check it out. So, the long, busy Thursday entailed of free warm up, free practice, pre qualifying, qualifying, and night practice. It was literally two, three days worth of testing crammed into one, which was pretty mad. This was the beginning of qualifying and I thought as it was my first Blancpain uh, qualifying session I'd follow my teammate Nicky Katzberg in the BMW in front of me. However, as you can see, as we went into the final chicane here to start our first flyers, uh, we were dive bombed by a couple of cars already completing their first flying laps, which was less than ideal, which is very frustrating. Uh, and the Pirelli tyre has a massive peak in it which means the first two laps you need to get the best out of the tyre because even if you drive better after lap two the tyres just steeply um, degrade then into a flat um, grip profile so it, after that becomes consistent but those first two laps you really need to nail so the fact that we were compromised going onto our first laps was really frustrating 
it was unfortunate but just something you can't really plan for when there's 72 cars out on circuit finding space on circuit is obviously super important but also very tricky at the same time this is my fastest lap i had to dive bomb a lamborghini uh, after he made a mistake coming out of the chicane and then i was able to hook up quite nicely behind this ferrari uh, up the kemmel state which helped give me a little bit of a toe uh, but then coming into pool on here i made a little bit of mistake just the rear slid very slightly i don't know if it was a bit of dirty air from the car ahead uh, but either way i ended up losing a quarter of a second uh, before going to the next breaking point here at piff patch but uh, i ended up i think i don't even know where we ended up because of the um hot weather affecting the m6's performance i think we were like 40 something or rather in my group which was the top group uh, but i was only half a tenth of my teammate nikki katzberg uh, second fastest in the team uh, and I think fourth fastest BMW driver overall um, so I was really really pleased with that it was a, a great showing for my first blank pan endurance uh, qualifying session um, and even though the team were quite disappointed as to where the car qualified overall secretly in my mind I was absolutely over the moon that I was able to match these guys as quick as that um, having done my homework since the spa previous test and um, yeah, put it into practice which uh, then allowed me to qualify really well so yeah i was super pleased and super happy so um yeah really good showing hopefully going forward we were then straight into night practice where i was able to get the head cam out and practice our pit stop not unlike in the vln where we have three minutes to complete the pit stop in the blank pan series it's pretty much as fast as you can and this really cool feature we have on the m6 is the air jack start which means as soon as the air jack lance is pulled out of the car you press a button and you just hold the clutch fully down and full throttle and the car fires up literally immediately and you can just go straight away so it's really high action uh, really fast paced pit stop which is really really fun <laughs> flat out upper rouge at night please check the video on screen so that is quality and night practice done please excuse me because i look and feel absolutely horrible it's been such a warm day i'm not at a shower and i've sweated absolutely bucket loads so uh yeah i think we line up p62 or something like that uh seventh in the am class and um uh, all set for the race on Saturday. Got day off tomorrow. I've just got warm up to do, um, which we may, may not even do. I'm not really sure. Um, so yeah. Anyway, signing off the evening at the BMW Customer Racing Hospitality for a midnight snack, and then a nice lie in tomorrow. Check out them. Ciao, ciao. Yeah, boy. Best seat in the house. <laughs> Pittard, I'm 27, I'm a British racing driver uh, and I've been driving the total Vulcan Horse BMW M6 for the past year now. So a day of press and lots of photos and lots of interviews done. Stay tuned to the total racing page uh, to see that a little bit later on. Um, yeah, all rest, relax, now time for an early bed, uh, ready for the big day tomorrow. So I think we're going to be needing this though, a rain jacket as the blue sky is not going to last much longer anyways signing off from day four now at spa i think ready for race day let's do this ciao ciao
If you see me and I ain't with my crew, believe I'm on my P's and Q's, even I'm my only two. That's the difference between me and you. If you see me and I ain't with my crew, believe I'm on my P's and Q's, even I'm my only two. That's the difference. Good afternoon from Spa, and as predicted, here comes the rain. So two hours, T minus, until the start of the race. Uh, and this is really gonna stir things up. Literally, no one's had any wet practice whatsoever. Uh, no one's haven't got any wet setup data or information. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how everyone fares with it. Nicky Katzberg was here at wet uh, when it was in that four seasons in one day. So he's in first for the program. So hopefully he'll be um, have an advantage on uh, the cars around him, be able to get away in the pro car. Uh, Anders is starting for us. Uh, he's, he's probably our most second experienced driver uh, and then I'm in quite a bit later on in the evening that's where I'm going to make the most difference to the bronze lineup. I'm going to six hours during this race so um, yeah I'll make the most when it's dark and really wet so I'm just in the short term. so yeah I'm looking forward to getting out there and uh, seeing what I can do so anyway um, pit more fans about to start we got this super this absolute super fan BMW absolutely everything what a keynote Time ago. All good. Life's good. Super fan. See, it's grim. It's gonna be a proper wet weather start. Great. And is in first. Wet tires on. Let's. Uh, the weather's supposed to. The rain's supposed to stop 15 minutes in the race. Apparently. So we'll see what happens. Here we go. Best of luck, Anders. Best of luck to the drivers. Bar 24 hours, 2019. Let's go. We're in business. The total 24 hours of Spa is underway. Because of the horrible conditions, the race was started under safety car, which was the right thing to do, which meant three laps under safety car because no one had done any driving in the wet that weekend. Uh, so I get everyone get a quick feel of the conditions before then going green. Safety car in at the end of this lap, David. Absolutely right. We are good to go, everybody. Maro Engel leads them into the bus stop. He has got right on his tail, Earl Bamba. The green flags are ready. The cars are going to be released. We're in business. We're racing. Down towards La Source, Maro Engel it is, who thunders away in the Black Falcon Mercedes and in the spray, in the wheel tracks. Earl Bamba gets down towards La Source, ahead of Miguel Molina, there fourth turning through. His Makaviki Foster comes next. We're on back Marcus, and there's a BMW that's been off the road. Has that got damage? It's one of the Vulcan horse cars. That's a slow, slow, slow BMW. And it's got a puncture, or has it got damage? Something. Look, Not the wheel's the coming tire, off. The right rear tire. Now, whether that was the cause or the effect, we don't know, but it is going barely back on, you know, get me home limp mode. And these are not run flat tires, no. and it looks like he's going to pull the BMW off as they come down, and it's in a precarious position at the entry into campus. So, I should be out there at the moment uh, for my stint, however, unfortunately. Uh, the car had a wheel nut failure which caused the wheel to fall off and Anders, who was at the wheel at the time, wasn't able to get the car back to the pits um, and because we can get back to the pits, we can't fix the car, we can't take the car back out so therefore it's race over for us So as this shot shows, there's a safety vehicle behind which had to tow Anders off the circuit for safety reasons and because of this reason we received outside assistance uh, meant that we weren't able to then return the car back to the race to even make the time up even though it was uh, still just under 23 hours to go so yeah hugely disappointing another 24 hours and another 90 minutes in and the race is done so yeah massively gutted really um, it was set to be an awesome race, uh, but yeah, this time wasn't to be, so big, big shame. So now I'm just going to enjoy one of the greatest 24 hours races in the world. So yeah, stay tuned for a few shots. So 
as well as supporting the Vulcan Horse team throughout the night, I've managed to wangle my way onto the broadcast through my connections of doing the British GT commentary with Martin Haven himself. In the booth, Martin Haven, and alongside me from Vulcan Horse Motorsport, David Pittard. David, pretty grim conditions all week. Uh, it's been so hot, it's, everybody's been melting, and now it's so wet, everybody's going, oh, finally we're back at Spa again. Yes, it's uh, normal service service resumed for the this part of the world uh, and it's come back with a vengeance I yeah, mean it, um, we've literally gone from shorts and t-shirts to uh, snorkels and flip so what's the plan now for the rest of the race just keep on keeping on and well we're gonna get I mean, points awarded now in two minutes 45 seconds oh, so shunt here for the oh, snitzer car on board oh no that's right. fast as well they're staring at the ceiling, you might as well be here, chatting to people. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so there's David, not much left to do in the race for him, unfortunately, except for to support Falkenhorst with, uh, with their other car. So the boys, again, you know, this, Still this is a, it's a really, really strong endurance racing team, Falkenhorst, and they've got a long history, like Schnitzer with BMW, and a long history of winning and performing really well in endurance racing. and and. So with the rain coming down, uh, the race was red flagged from just before dawn at about half five until the late morning, so around 11 to half 11, um, which was, yeah, the right thing to do. A lot of cars managed to get their technical pit stops done before this, which meant that they would then make that time back again after the red flag, uh, which was a big shame. But a big f uh, fight back from the Vulcan Horse team had seen them running in the top 10, top five and top three, which was really, really strong. This morning when the red flag came out, you can see the clock ticking on down still, so five hours plus still to go. This is the order they're going to start in. Christian Engelhart will lead the way from Christian Kronjers in the BMW, last year's winning car in second place, and then third, Zayed Ashkenani. Now, those three have all yet to serve their five-minute technical pit stop, so you can anticipate that they will drop down. It's a pit under yellow. Yes, they're going to lose more time here. Bad call. Whatever, whatever. So we'll Cronyers see. now leads the way. The BMW down to La Source through the traffic. So BMW number 34 picks up the race lead. There goes. The car is in for a technical pit stop at the moment. Uh, mandatory in the regulations to do. So it's basically a brake change, front brake change. It's happening now. It's lit, bro. Um, Ideally, we would have done it under full course yellow, but we're getting close to the end of the race now. It just needs to happen. Uh, you can see the brakes have come off. It's clear that Nicky is still pushing on the inlap there. So they do a whole brake disc and caliper change and pad change in well, less than a few minutes. It's pretty damn impressive. Uh, the car's been fueled, new tyres are on, and they're getting ready to send. Nikki in a second. All, all to play for now. Three hours to push, push, push. Vanna and another puncture. Look at that. The Vulcan Horse BMW through, but that has already had one puncture on the right hand side. Now it's on the left, and that's another delay coming up for the Vulcan Horse car. Well, it's strange. I mean, I can understand if you're running in wet weather tires. Oh, no, that's fine. He's been, off. He's been, been in the barrier. He's yeah. The back of the car has stoved in against. So there it was, was that contact by the Audi that pushed Ooh. the car off the racetrack. That's coming through Bruce, uh, the corner uh, following Brussel, now known as Jack East, because that was a, an assisted uh, incident. So that's why that tyre has been cut down. So even with half an hour to go, the drama still hadn't stopped for the Vulcan Horse team. Uh, being turned round at No Name Corner by one of the Audis and pushed into the tyres. Luckily it was only the tyres, which meant that it was only bodywork damage, even though it looks quite significant. Uh, the car was able to pit, check over the damage, put new tyres on and send it straight back out. And even though it dropped from P8 at the time, uh, they managed to cross the line at P12. Uh, so yeah, great uh, result to finish the toughest GT3 event in the world, uh, given the difficulties that the BMWs faced at the beginning of the weekend. Big well done to Porsche for winning, and uh, make sure you take note of that significant half final half hour event when it comes to the next video that I'm currently making. If you like this video, please give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe, 
and um, yeah thanks for tuning in ciao ciao